Squeepy little dip, wee little little dip, boo. All right, welcome to my second and likely last visitation to the Xbox game Sneak King. This time, however, I'm going to give it more of a review than a playthrough, although the video you see is indeed me pussyfooting around with the BK Creepster. The game offers you four stages with 20 challenges each. The stages include the sawmill, which is where you start out, a cul-de-sac, a construction site, and downtown. Each of the stages offers you a unique set of goals that the king must accomplish to claim victory. There are parameters that each challenge sets up to grant you a score of A, B, or C. One of the many frustrating aspects of this game is that you're not notified how the ranking is determined until after you complete the challenge the first time. Some of them are timed and some of them are based on your score. You receive 100 points for each successful delivery, and those points are multiplied based on the following criteria. Hunger level, range, flourish, and chain. The hunger level is depicted by a burger that appears over a random NPC's head, with color ranges from green to yellow to orange, red, and finally flashing red, awarding you a multiplier from 1 to 5 respectively. The range is determined by how far away you are from the character when awarding the item from 1 to 3. The closer you are, the higher the multiplier. The flourish meter goes from 1 to 4, with 1 being a regular delivery, followed by flourish levels 1 through 3. There's a meter that quickly goes up and down, like kicking a field goal in Madden, and the area in which you click the A button will determine the flourish level. The last multiplier is a chain. This simply increases by one every time you make a successful delivery without being seen. So, the maximum number of points you can receive per delivery depends entirely on how patient and stealthy you can be. The characters in each stage move in the same predictable patterns and are often hungry at the same moments in each challenge so a bit of memorization is really all it takes to accomplish most challenges. Each character has a line of vision that is displayed in front of them. The goal is to avoid these areas when making your deliveries. There are two speeds the king can move around in, sneaking and running. Well, more like prancing, really. But when you run, you make just enough noise for the characters to look your way and ruin your chain meter. So it's important to only run when in the clear. If you're spotted by a would-be recipient of your kingly goodness, their hunger level turns to zero. The sawmill offers you a moderate array of challenges, many with a set number of deliveries, no time limit, and a target point level for the A rank. The game keeps you on your toes every once in a while by throwing in the occasional challenge, where the A rank requires you to either finish in a certain amount of time, deliver without being spotted, jump out of a set number of hiding spots, or achieve a certain level flourish multiple times in a row. Other challenges take away the chain multiplier, require you to reach a certain chain level for the A rank, or achieve a high level of points in a single delivery, where you will require a chain multiplier to do so. The final challenge requires you to feed everyone in the level before they pass out. After completing all of the challenges in each stage, you see a fake news report about the king and his deliveries before going to the next stage. The cul-de-sac offers you a similar array of challenges, but keeps the game fresh, much like their menu, by giving you a set supply of items to deliver. Pressing the A button at the wrong time will subtract an item from your inventory and make achieving the A rank a bit harder, if not impossible. Other challenges restrict the hunger level in which you can deliver to, gender of recipient, delivering and ascending flourishes, delivering without flourishes, and one fuck of a challenge where you can only deliver to people in the backyards. The last challenge is much like challenge 20 in the sawmill, only this time you must also go unspotted. The construction site offers a few new challenges as well, including one that doesn't require a single delivery, just that you be seen by everyone in the level. One where you have to feed five people of all five hunger levels, and one where the goal is to score the lowest point total possible. The final stage is the downtown area. It offers a similar array of challenges as seen in the past three stages, offering little to no imagination, as by this time they've pretty much totally exhausted all possible combinations of completion. This game receives a lot of flack for its playability, and rightfully so. The control stick seems backwards, and I'm often seen doing a loop after each successful delivery for having pushed the stick in the direction of the king's desired post-delivery trajectory, sending him in the wrong direction. There are numerous glitches that I've encountered, and I'm sure with more gameplay I could uncover hundreds more, as the ones I discovered were done so completely accidentally. There are some funny king mannerisms that were worked into the game, such as the king pulling out a mirror to admire himself if you stand in one place for too long, and pressing the button on the sawmill to lower the bridge, as well as punching a pillar over in the construction area. These things made me laugh out loud the first time I saw them. And then, there are the flourishes. Each stage offers you three new flourish animations in an attempt to keep the game humorous. I have some of my personal favorites lined up for you here. 
overall lack of attention to detail in the animation, such as the sawdust continuing to flow out of the log when the guy stops sawing, a useless view where you can see from inside the king's mask, a timer that has a mind of its own by continuing after the challenge is over, and the non-playable characters speaking like adults in Charlie Brown cartoons have aided to giving this game a bad rap. One challenge, however, has probably done more for the game's reputation than any other, and if you've ever played this game, you know which one I'm talking about. I've beaten it three times without receiving the A rank. I speak, of course, of Cul-de-Sac Challenge 15. The object here is to deliver to five people only in the backyards, and you need to do it in under one minute for the A rank. After more hours of gameplay than I care to admit, I finally did it. Here it is for your enjoyment. Alright, I think I got three more good tries on this level left in me before I just can't do it anymore. I am sick of sitting in my room by myself, talking to myself. Um, as one could imagine, that gets old pretty quick. But, uh, yeah, I'll give it three more goes, and then uh, I'll go stick a gun in my mouth. There's two down. I'm looking at the radar. I don't see anybody else in the backyard that's hungry, which is no big surprise. I have a theory that I've been using in the last few attempts at this, that if I run out and I run in front of the people who've got the hunger bubbles, maybe, uh, maybe the game triggers somebody else to get hungry, so... Let's get seen by a few people here, and, well, there we go. There's two people in the backyard that are hungry. Maybe I'm onto something. Who knows? All right, go around the corner, and turn around, stick it out. Even white girl got to shout, a baby got snack. Do my eyes deceive me? Is she hungry? Oh, she is hungry. I think we're going to do it. We're finally going to do it. I, I might lose... I might just totally lose it here. I got three seconds. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Yes! Yes! Add on two seconds, Sneak King. Go ahead and try and add on those two seconds. You did it three other fucking times. Did I do it? He's celebrating. Can I? Yes. Yes, I can. And I am a done. I just totally demolished the fuck out of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it because, well, to be honest with you, I kind of did, except for this challenge. All right, that's it for this video. See you later. So what's my ranking of this game? Honestly? I give it a B. It's not the worst game I've ever played. Sure, it's frustrating taking your time to achieve the target score, only to find out that you're also under a time limit for the A rank. Sure, there are glitches, but some of them are kind of funny too, and yeah, the only thing you receive upon the game's completion is a black suit for the king to wear, should you ever decide to play this game again. But honestly... What in the 50 shades of fuck did you expect? The game was four whole dollars after you bought lunch back in 2006. It was a game made by a fast food chain about a fast food chain. It's not Metal Gear Solid, it's fucking Burger King. There are funny animations and just enough of a variety of challenges and difficulty to keep you playing. I could see the backlash if you paid 50 bucks for it, and believe me, I'd jump on the bandwagon at that point but I also would not have purchased it in the first place at that price range. It was a slightly humorous ad campaign, and if you asked me, it worked. I got my four bucks worth, and that's all anyone can ask of any game they purchase. Will I ever play it again? Fuck no, but you might. Buy me some chicken fries and throw me a five spot and it's yours. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. If you like what you saw, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll be sure to post more stuff just like this. Later.